Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for Prehistoric Kingdom where we have the Dev Diary for January of 2024, our first Dev Diary of the year. We didn't get one for December, but we did get Update 9. And as you can tell by the image you are looking at, we have some big things coming up this year for Prehistoric Kingdom. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the exciting stuff coming in 2024. Welcome to the January Development Update. Happy New Year, everyone. We hope you all had a lovely holiday season with plenty of gifts and giving to go around. This blog post will be focused on what's to come in 2024, looking at the upcoming Update 10, as well as some rather exciting additions coming throughout the year. Let's jump right into it. Last month in December, we released Update 9, featuring the grassland biome and a selection of fan-favorite animals like the swimming Spinosaurus. The reception to this update was really positive, and we quickly wanted to thank everyone who tuned in to play the game again. Both Update 8 and 9 have been our first major steps into making our animals feel more organic and alive thanks to the overhauled locomotion and brain systems. This year we're going to continue this trend with adding more AI behaviours, animations, and the long-awaited introduction of baby animals. As a start, we've been tackling a long-standing community request, Animal Avoidance. Borrowing much of the technology currently used on guests, our goal is to give the, the animals a similar implementation, dynamically pathing around any incoming creatures in a nice and performant way. Take a look at the work in progress version that will be coming in update 10. So here we can see several Psittacosaurus in a wooden pen, all seeming to avoid each other in a very somewhat realistic way. Now there is a, a little bit of clipping, but I think they address it here. Once Update 10 releases, players will be able to see a dramatic decrease on animals walking directly through the middle of one another. While there will be some clipping with heads and tails, hard to get rid of without having oversized avoidance ranges on the animals, this will be a massive improvement across the board. In mid to late February, players will be able to explore the frozen wilds of the Canadian Rockies. In Update 10, Build your park with a brand new modular theme and resurrect extinct species straight out of the Ice Age. Joining the roster is none other than the Siberian unicorn, Elasmotherium. This large species of rhinoceros is best known for what is typically depicted as an exceptionally large horn. In recent years, however, its exact size has become the topic of debate. When cloning Elasmotherium, our scientists were fortunate enough to find a variety of horn shapes and sizes depending on the genetic skin that they selected. Very convenient. That's not the only rhino joining us for Update 10, however. Found in East Asian fossil deposits, Sinotherium was a hairless ancestor to what would later become Elasmotherium. Available in-game as an alternate species, Sinotherium is the perfect option for park managers that want another grassland-based mammal. In total, this makes two species of rhino and two species of cave lion coming to the game in February. The team looks forward to seeing all your gorgeous screenshots once Update 10 releases. And for those who were not familiar with the cave lines before, here they are. So we're getting two different cave lines. We are getting Panthera spelia, the Eurasian cave lion, and Panthera atrox, the American lion. I believe that might be the one you can see here, or I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but um, either way, we're getting two beautiful animals in the game with two alternate species. The Stone Age theme is a new collection of styles and building pieces inspired by Paleolithic and Neolithic architecture, with items based on caves, early living and budding civilization. We think this theme will truly make your park feel like a prehistoric kingdom. Yeah, this looks phenomenal right here. You can see several little toadstools and mushrooms, as well as a fish rack, wooden pieces. You've also got stretched out animal hides hung up there. As well as a few nets and a campfire too, as well as some ancient pottery. I think that'll be cool. And this one, this one's one of my favourites. You can see the sauropods walking with the mammoths and the rhinos. And I know, I know they're not the same, but those sauropods in the back do look a little bit like the Dreadnoughtus from Prehistoric Planet. I'm not complaining, it looks phenomenal. And we've also got some stalactites and stalagmites um, for a bit of a cave aesthetic. I think that will look really cool. And I love these paintings. These look phenomenal. 
And we also get Stonehenge right here. And I think that's a canoe in the bottom right. Yeah, this is going to be a really cool thing to work with. I love seeing these Ice Age animals with some Stone Age architecture. I think that's going to look fantastic. Of course, a new building theme wouldn't be complete without new fences too. We look forward to seeing what habitats you build with these Palisade and Stone fences in Update 10. I really like how these look. These will look phenomenal alongside some of the Pleistocene species. And this is the um, stone fence, so you've got some glass windows on the middle one, and I think those are, those are either glass or just peepholes in the big one. But either way, these all add great aesthetics to a very heavily themed park, but I would love to build a Stone Age park if you'd be interested in, in doing so when this releases. Finally, we've arrived in the mountains of Canada. This map boasts gorgeous snowy views with a variety of foliage from the boreal, coastal and grassland biomes. And yeah, this looks absolutely beautiful. I love the mountains in the background and the pine trees. I think that looks phenomenal. I've seen some people compare it to Jurassic World Evolution too, but hey, I love how this looks. This looks fantastic. At night, players will be greeted to the stunning light show from the Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kingdom. Yes, please stay tuned for the release of Update 10 in mid to late February. I love that reference. That reference is good. And I really love how the Aurora Borealis looks here. It, it's going to add it such a cool atmosphere. We create some very cool screenshots with that in the background, I'll tell you. So update 10 is looking pretty cool, but what does the rest of the year look like for the game? We have a few major pillars that are in development behind the scenes and our aim is to deliver them throughout 2024. As these pillars are quite the undertaking, we will continue to release more art-centric updates, e.g. update 10, to help prevent content droughts while we work on them in the background. There were a number of months last year when the game did not receive support while we developed update 8, and that's something we do not want to repeat. So grab your reading glasses and a drink, because we're about to see a lot of text. Staff are going to be the heart of Prehistoric Kingdom's management. They have the connection to your park, your guests, and your animals. Beyond simply hiring the right people, it will be your job to ensure the park's layout is designed efficiently so that supplies for both guests and animals can be moved quickly. In terms of development, we've started laying the groundwork for staff and the code base. We've done a lot of design work figuring out what exactly they should bring to the game and how that relates to our upcoming logistics management systems. While we will be getting into exact gameplay details in a future post, we'd like to start by sharing our vision for the various staff types in Prehistoric Kingdom and what they offer. Generalist staff primarily interact with the guest and back end side of your park, taking out the role of cashier, janitor, or logistics. These are the people who ensure everything runs smoothly. A cashier tends to visitors at kiosks and stores. Janitor cleans toilets, trash, and delivers garbage to dumpsters. Logistics delivers shipments from loading bays to various storage units around the park. Good storage, animal feed warehouses. What makes generalists unique, however, is that these roles aren't rigid. If an urgent task appears and there's an idle staff member nearby, they'll complete it as long as it's a generalist job. For example, if a cashier is waiting vacantly with no customers to tend to, they might decide to go quickly clean up a pile of trash, a janitor job, or restock some merchandise shelves, a logistics job, if they had nothing else to do. Once complete, the cashier would return to their original job. Our goal here is to maximize the utility of our staff. So if the park's demand raises slightly higher than your current workforce numbers, the player has a built-in safety net. Of course, if the demand continues to rise and trash gets out of control, for example, the best move would be to hire more janitors. Specialist staff will interact with specific parts of the park management experience. Unlike generalists, their roles are fixed and cannot be done by other staff types. Keepers restock animal feeders and enrichment, clean habitats and deliver dung to compost heaps. Veterinarians monitor habitats for sick, injured or pregnant animals and can provide feeder supplements and medication. Engineers repair damaged fences, modules, and build high security fencing. Security accompany staff into dangerous habitats and protect guests in the event of an emergency. 
When can we hear more, we hear you ask. There's a lot to cover with stuff and logistics gameplay, so we will be doing a more in-depth blog post when we have more in-game content to show. This is going to fundamentally change and set the direction for challenge mode going forward. So we'll likely run some early feedback builds on the public testing branch once we get to that stage. If you've been waiting for Prehistoric Kingdom to get more meat on its management bones before jumping in, please stay tuned to these dev diaries because we will be wanting your feedback in a few months. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. This year, the team will be adding the process of ontogeny to Prehistoric Kingdom. In real time, you'll be able to watch your animals seamlessly grow from tiny babies to gangly adolescents and, of course, into the fully grown adults you've been already hatching in your parks. These are not just simply scaled down adults either. Our baby animals will have softer appearances, smoother skin, different bone proportions, and make the most adorable of squeaks. You can see an early test of our Montasaurs above, showcasing stubbier snouts, a lack of spinal ornaments, and their baby skin patterns. Over time, the animals will seamlessly blend between their life stages, growing into their mature silhouettes and fading into their adult coloration. If you got to play or have seen footage from our old demo in 2017, you'll know exactly how this works. For both technical reasons and memory constraints, that we will be limiting baby skin patterns to one per animal. This means that regardless of the skin you've chosen, all designs for a given animal, for example a Montosaurus, will appear the same at birth and eventually grow into their selected skin colour. There may be a few exceptions to this as development continues, but generally the rule is one baby skin per animal. We should note that like adults, however, baby animals will have individual colour variation. Each little hatchling, calf or kitten will look slightly different from one another. In sandbox, players will be able to pick the age of an animal when creating them in the nursery. In challenge mode, however, we are planning to make that part of the research tree. If players want adult specimens at the beginning of their challenge game, they'll have to go through different means to acquire them. Oh, future mechanics. More info on revised animal creation and acquisition gameplay will be coming in the future. Breeding is something that a lot of people have been requesting and we agree that it feels like the next step for ontogeny in Prehistoric Kingdom. With that said, we are focused on delivering the core experience first, animals growing up, before expanding with additional gameplay such as breeding. Arriving later this year in Update 12 is the much beloved gentle giant Apatosaurus. This enormous creature is the first dinosaur included in Prehistoric Kingdom to be part of the superfamily known as Diplodocoidea, a group of sauropods best recognised for their immense size and whip-like tails. We're still working on this animal of course, painting the other skins, animating etc, but the team really wanted to start 2024 off with an early look at one of the biggest creatures coming this year. Coming alongside of Hadrosaurus, however, is an alternate species with a household name and much dubious fame. We hope you enjoy the concept art for what will eventually become the mighty thunder lizard, Brontosaurus, adorned with Bronto smashed neck spikes and a cluster of lethal spines at the tip of its tail. This classic from the Jurassic has never looked so good. And I can wholeheartedly agree with that. Now, I remember I said this might be Diplodocus, but I am pleasantly surprised that it isn't. I would love to see both Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus in game moving around because these two look phenomenal if that actually turns out to be a skin for brontosaurus in the game i will be so happy because that looks fantastic yeah I, i'm really going to enjoy these two now a lot of us are probably very used to these two but um Presto kingdom really knows how to sell an old fossil don't they grab your digging tools and call us a fossil because on february 14th Prehistoric Kingdom will have existed for 10 years. When this project was first created all the way back in 2014, we were teenagers, high school students, and young adults in college. This project, iteration upon iteration, has been us learning, growing, and meeting amazing like-minded individuals who share a passionate love for not just this genre, but prehistoric life as a whole. It took a number of years before Prehistoric Kingdom started to go anywhere. But we're still not as fast as the big studios making games like this. But we love our baby and we couldn't be more grateful for having the opportunity to develop this game. To our team, families, backers, Crytivo, players and fans, thank you. And honestly, the thanks goes to you guys because you guys have created something beautiful here. Like, 
look how far this game has come. And unlike those big studios making games similar to this, you can feel the passion and heart that has been poured into this thing. It is a great example of what a game can be, especially a dinosaur game, when several years of hard work has been put into it. We may only have so many creatures in the game, but quantity does not outweigh the quality here, and the quality that Prehistoric Kingdom possesses is somewhat unmatched. It is looking at everything that many big studio games don't have. Jurassic World Evolution 2 does not have baby dinosaurs in the works. It also doesn't have dinosaurs that can swim. It may have marine reptiles, but they cannot go in and out of water. Except for the Nothosaurus and Archelon, of course, but you get what I mean. But here, you have something that is, is a passion project. And we as players and fans can only say thank you to this amazing team for what they have been able to bring so far. And I cannot wait to see what comes in the future. Let me know what your most anticipated feature of Prehistoric Kingdom in 2024 will be in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and subscribe for more. And as for now, I'll see you guys likely when Update 10 releases for Prehistoric Kingdom. Bye-bye.